Lord, Hebrews chapter 11. Going to learn something this morning. Hebrews chapter 11. It's always funny when I when I when I go. I was telling uh, this is I'm sorry, and this and you know my wife Sarah, and then we have Adlin, but this is my uh, my in-laws, uh, my father-in-law, mother-in-law, then Paige, Ethan, and Becca. So I brought them with me. They uh, I don't know why they came to hear me preach, but you know they're here today, and so now I'm on my best behavior this morning. And um, because my mother-in-law keeps me in line pretty good, so I will be on my best behavior today, I promise. I won't tell all my mother-in-law jokes that I had. And uh, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Amen. But Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to read verse number 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. Hebrews 11, verse number 1. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Then go down to verse number 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. This morning, uh, uh, the, the, these notes that I have are not original uh, with me. Uh, they were notes that I was taught, and uh, and they were just they were so good. I, I wrote them down, and I taught it to the teenagers back home, uh, just because, uh, you know, th- this is one of those uh, these truth uh, just a, a truth on faith that really helped me, and so I wrote it down. I've kept these notes. I, I've looked over them, and you know, you, you go back over and you. You, you look up all the verses yourself and do all of those things. And so uh, I'm not going to claim uh, that these uh, notes are original with me, amen. But I will say that it is a great truth that I, I'd like to give back to you, something that I learned I was uh, that was taught to me and that I chewed up, meditated on. I'd like to give it back to you a little bit here, amen. So uh, we're going to learn here at Luke cha- or Hebrews chapter 11, I'm sorry, and we're going to learn about faith this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we get to be here this morning, get to be in the house of God, get to learn from the Word of God, Lord. And what a privilege it is for me, Lord, to get to preach. Lord, I sure do enjoy uh, preaching, Lord, and getting a chance to give God's Word, Lord, to help people to grow. Ask Holy Spirit of God that you would help me to concentrate, to help me to focus on the Word of God, focus on the message that I believe that you have for us this morning. And, uh, Lord, would you help me to say only what you'd want to be said, and nothing more and nothing less. Holy Spirit, give me the words that you'd have, and may all that we do and say today honor and glorify you. May we be better Christians because of it. Lord, may the truth help, and may it grow uh, somebody this morning. Lord, we love you. Thank you, and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I was telling telling my father-in-law before I I get started, I was telling him yesterday, I was out visiting, and I saw somebody saved, and I invited some people. Every time I come here, I always have a visitor that's coming on my bus somehow for church, you know. So I've got like six kids that are supposed to be there this morning from one house. They just come piling out the door yesterday. And uh, so I was uh, I was all excited. And then I was like, every time I come, I was like, I always have some visitors that show up. So I told my uh, bus workers, I was like, you better be good to my visitors, you know, and uh, be, you know, be nice to them. So I call them, I'm going to call them after church, make sure they came. And, uh, you know, you always want to be there for those visitors, but they'll be all right, so they they got it taken care of, but who knows. Of course, I'll probably get a call afterwards, and uh, the bus broke down, the church is on fire, and uh, I tell them what they get for sending me away, you know, I, I, I'm the problem solver, so now I'm kidding. But Hebrews chapter 11 is all about faith. We know it's the faith chapter, but it's, uh, like I said, this is something that was taught to me, and, and it's maybe something that you've heard before, maybe something that you know, but it's always a, a good reminder and sometimes for some that maybe this is something you haven't heard before. Um, but what God deals with on the subject of faith. We start with, well, let me go Luke chapter 18. We're also going to turn there. Luke chapter 18, verse number 8. Faith is important in every Christian's life. Every Christian's life has to be involved with faith. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. I'll show you something here. The Bible says, I tell you, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. God is looking for faith. God is looking for faith. In a Christian, we have to have faith to live 
the Christian life. Faith will produce works in our lives. If we have faith, it will produce works, but works does not produce faith. Okay, that's the difference. We know that faith is needed for salvation. You have to have faith to trust Christ. But that faith in your life will produce works for God. But you working does not produce faith. That's why sometimes the other churches, they think, well, you have to work your way to heaven. But work, it doesn't go backwards. Just, be, just from what you do, your works that you do for the Lord does not produce faith. It's faith in your life that produces the works. And that's why it's important to start with faith. The very bottom, the very beginning of the Christian life, uh, if you want to say the, uh, what, what you start with, the, uh, the, the very basic of our Christian life starts with faith. Everything branches from there. What you do for the Lord. What, uh, maybe when you serve in a church. Finding out God's will for your life. Uh, beginning to read your Bible. Beginning to pray. All starts with faith at the very beginning. Um, grace is God's ability. When we, when we talk about being saved, God gives us grace. And we know Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith. So grace is God's ability. Grace is what God can give. But faith is our responsibility. Faith is, is us. God gives grace, but he gives it through faith. And so that's why we know, and everybody I believe in this room is saved and born again, we understand that we achieved grace from God through our faith. Not through works. The Bible says, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's not our works. So it's not our works that produces faith, but we have to have faith to get grace from God. That's how, that's how God gives us His grace. Uh, let me uh, go here. Let me look here, look at my notes. Uh, people doubt also because their faith is weak. Christians, so you start with maybe somebody needs to be saved. Well, it starts with faith. Where does faith come from? Well, we'll look at that. But even Christians begin to doubt maybe their salvation. Maybe sometimes a Christian, maybe they're saved, but you know, you have, they have doubts about it. Why is that? Because their faith is weak. Amen. Because it, it, is, it is about faith. It's not about your works. We have to get an understanding that faith is not about works. Faith is of its own. Now, faith will produce the works in a Christian's life. But there's a lot of people that work in a church that doubt their salvation. There's a lot of people that work in churches that aren't even saved. And it's because the faith is weak. And so you have to start with faith. You have to build your faith. Your faith has to be rooted. It has to be strong in order to find God's will, in order to work for the Lord, in order to see the power of God come down, your faith has to be strong. How do we, how does our, well, first, four places that God is looking for faith. We see here in Luke chapter 18, verse number 8, it says that when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith. So God is looking for this faith. He's coming and he's going to look for faith on the earth. Number one, God is looking for faith in your heart. God is looking for faith in your heart. He wants to see, is there somebody that has faith in their heart? Are you saved this morning? Are you born again? That's where faith starts. It starts in the heart. God wants to, when he comes, he's going to look for the Christians. He's going to look for those that have been born again, that have put their faith and trust in him, and have received the grace of God through their faith. God's not going to look for your faith in your works like we talked about. God's not going to look for faith in, in those other things because you can't be saved to those. It's faith in your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ that produces salvation. That's why it's important, amen, to go soul winning. Amen. That's why it's important to be giving out gospel tracts and to constantly be trying to be a witness for God because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to put their faith and trust in Christ because that's where faith starts. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for it in the heart of every believer. Then he's looking for it in your home. Number one, God's looking for faith in your heart. God wants to see, are you saved? Are you born again? When the Son of Man comes and he's going to bring and he's going to take everybody out of this world that's born again, he's looking for that faith that's in the heart. That's where it starts. But then he's going to look for it in your home. God wants to see faith in your home. God wants to see uh, a Christian family that loves the Lord, that serves God, that is uh, living for the Lord that 
is doing their best to be in church. And that's where God's looking for faith constantly. He wants to find faith in our hearts, but he wants to find it in our homes. That's why America's a wreck, amen, because there's not enough homes with faith. We're living our lives constantly for ourselves. We're living our lives constantly for others, or maybe we're living our lives constantly for uh, what we can get, uh, maybe money, maybe for gain. But God says he wants to find faith. Amen. God's looking for it in the home. Then God's, gonna, then God's looking for it in the church. Amen. How many churches do we know that are leaving the, leaving the old-fashioned uh, old doctrine of God's Word? You know why? Because there's no faith. How many churches do we know that, are, that have stopped going soul winning? How many churches do we know that have left maybe the standards, the, the love for the Lord, have started using the praise and worship and, and have stayed away from old-fashioned hymns? Why? Because there's no faith. When faith becomes weak, so does the Christian. When your faith is weak, that's where you become weak. And God says that he's going to look for it in the church. That's why the churches are a mess. I believe that's why the churches have lost the young people of today's generation too. Because there's no faith. Because what is going to keep your young people is faith. Amen. That's why we have a church in town. They used to be a Baptist church. Now they call themselves Cross Point. And uh, they, they've done that. They've gone to praise and worship. They've gone to all this stuff because they couldn't keep people in church, so they've changed it for where there's not really preaching. It becomes an entertainment. And that's what a lot of churches are going to. A lot of churches are going to, let's entertain. Let's uh, have a praise and worship band. Let's do all this. Why? Because they can't keep people. But that's because you can't keep somebody in church. That's God that does it. It's the faith. It's the Holy Spirit that works on the inside that produces faith for somebody to want to love the Lord, for somebody to want to please God. It comes from faith. Amen. And then number four, God's looking for faith in your nation. If we can get our hearts, if we can get our hearts right, we get saved, we're born again, we love the Lord, faith in our heart, then we put that faith into our home. We begin to get our children in the Word of God. We begin to get our families in the Word of God. We begin to witness to our families, to get faith in our home. Then we get that faith in our church and begin to, and begin to spread that throughout our church. Then that will go through our nation. Amen. God wants to find a Christian nation. That's why America is so blessed, because for so long America has been a beacon for the gospel. There's faith, but we're seeing our nation slowly decline. And we're seeing God slowly pull his hand of blessing away from our nation because of a lack of faith. God blesses faith. But God wants your faith to increase. We know that Luke 17 verse 5 uh, where the disciples ask, Lord, increase our faith. People have a desire to increase their faith. God wants to increase our faith. You ought to have a desire to increase your faith because faith is ever-growing. It's not just something that you just get at salvation and then that's it. it, it just, it's just there. And, and No, your faith has to grow, amen? Your faith is like a plant. It, begin, it starts out and it begins to grow. It begins at salvation with the seed of the Word of God put in your heart. And then it grows and grows and you've got to water that. You've got to get it in, and, and allow it to cultivate. And not let your faith die. Not let your faith become weak. So there are four Bible principles on faith. Four Bible principles on faith that I'd like to give you to help us to understand faith. We know that faith doesn't come from works. Okay? It's not by coming and, and serving God and, and coming to, and, and going soul winning. And, all, and those things are a result of your faith. But where does faith come from? Well, we're going to talk about that. Four Bible principles on faith that I believe will help you this morning. Number one, the object of our faith. The object of our faith. The object of your faith in the Christian life is God. That is the object of your faith. That is who your faith is in. Hebrews 11, chapter 1 is our kind of our text there. It says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We have to, for salvation, we place our faith and trust in Jesus. He's the object of our faith. People say, well, you know, well, what do you believe in? 
Well, I believe God. Amen. My faith is in Jesus Christ. My faith is in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. God is the object of your faith. That's why we tell people, don't put your faith and trust in the church. Don't put your faith and trust in baptism. Don't put your faith and trust in these different things. God is the object of your faith. God is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's where your faith is in. Your faith is in God, not your faith in a pastor. Don't put your faith into a man. Don't put your faith into an institution. Don't put your faith into maybe a mom and dad. Make the object of your faith the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, the origin of our faith. The origin of our faith. We know this from uh, the book of Romans. The Bible says that uh, uh, the, our faith is in, our, the origin of our faith is the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the origin of our faith, where faith comes from, is the word of God. So now we see why it's important when you go soul winning, open up your Bible and show people Scripture and show people the Bible, what it says, because that's where faith is a, it comes from. The object of their faith is the Lord Jesus Christ. But faith comes from the Word of God. Faith comes from constantly hearing God's Word, the Bible says. So for a Christian as well, you got saved because somebody told you the Word of God, you heard the Word of God, or maybe you read the Word of God and the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart, that's, a res that's where faith is a result of, is the Word of God. But now as a Christian, your faith needs to grow. It needs to constantly be cultivated. How does that happen? By a constant daily walk with the Lord and, your, and God's Word. Sometimes uh, I, the teenagers will ask, you know, how, how, do I, how, do, how do I increase my faith? You know, and I try to teach the teenagers, it's in the Word of God. Read God's Word. If you want more faith, if you want to know what it is to trust God more, if you want to know what it is to really rely upon God, read God's Word. Amen? I can't give you faith. I can't, uh, I can't take some of mine and, and, uh, and share it with you. Faith is, a, it's in your, it, if you've been saved, it's in your heart. You have, you have faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ, but it comes from God's Word. Every Christian today ought to have a time where they spend time in the Word of God. You have time that you read the Bible because the more of God's Word that you have, the more faith you will have. The more time you spend reading God's Word, the more faith God will give you. Great Christians that we know, maybe if you read about missionaries and read about pastors and and, uh, and I like to spend time with men of God that maybe uh, that I really respect. And, and I ask them about their walk with God. Ask them what they do with their Bible. And it amazes me. They spend hours in the Word of God. They spend hours reading, memorizing. And, uh, and I was asking, it was my, uh, not my youth pastor, it was my parents' youth pastor, Brother Johnson. He's a pastor now in, uh, in Colorado. And uh, he, would, he, he told me, he said, Richard, he said, this is what it boils down to. He said, what you do with the Word of God is what God will do with you. He said, what you do with the Word of God determines what God will do with you. The more of God's Word that you have, the more God will do with you. Because God will give you the faith to do more. But it starts with the Word of God. You have to under so understand, it's very simple. You want more faith? Get more of God's Word. If this world wants more faith, we need more of God's Word. That's why when we go, we want to give people the Word of God. We want to hand people the Bible. We want to have the Gospel in our tracks because it's the Word of God that gives more faith. You want more faith today? Read more of God's Word. Make a decision in 2016 to have more, not less. Amen? Number three, the objective of faith. The object of faith is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where your faith relies in. That's who your faith is toward. You want to increase your faith to have more faith towards the Lord. You want to have more faith to do more for God. But the objective of faith is the will of God. The will of God. That's our objective. We want to find God's will for our life. But God's will for your life cannot be found without faith. Now, faith comes from the Word of God. You'll never know the will of God outside of the Word of God. 
That was one of the greatest statements I'd ever heard. You'll never know the will of God outside of the Word of God. So that's why it's important to be in God's Word. You want to know God's will? Know God's Word. Christian uh, teenagers all the time, they're, they're looking for God's will for their life. Looking for God's will for a mate. You know, they're all, you know, they want to get married one of these days, you know. And I said, well, don't worry about it. Jesus is coming back before you get married anyway. But they want to know, what's God's will for my life? Why tell them, say, well, how much of God's word do you know? When you sit in class, are you taking notes? You know, some, some of the kids will sit in there, play around, goof around. One kid was pushing on my pulpit last week, pushing it to me. And I was just like, what are you doing? Go over there, smack him. You know, and I say, well, you don't want to know why you don't know the will of God? You're not listening to God's word. You're not in God's word. You're not spending time memorizing. You're not spending time getting to know more about God's word and what God wants as a Christian. That's the objective of faith. The objective is to find God's will for our life. You know, and, and even, and you say, well, I, you know, I, I have a good job and, and you know, and I, I've been serving the Lord here now. And I don't know what God has for your life, but God's will for your life may, may change from what it is now. Uh, I was reading about some missionaries. I, I do that for the teenagers. I, I put a, a missionary each week on our, on our newsletter, and, uh, and, and it surprised me. Some of these men uh, were even in, in later in age, and they say how that God pushed, put upon their heart. They had jobs. They had a family, but God put upon their heart to be a missionary. God put upon their heart to go across to a foreign soil. And it reminded me how that God's will is not just for young people. You know, just because maybe uh, young people at 16, 17, and 18 are looking for God's will, those aren't the only people that should be looking for God's will for their life. Amen? All of us ought to be constantly looking for what is that next step for God's will in our life. What does God want us to do more? Amen? Because God wants us to constantly be growing. We don't find God's will for the rest of our lives at age 18, amen? God's will is constantly being revealed to us every day, every year. God has more that he wants us to be a part of. But that's why we have to have faith, amen? We have to have faith because we don't live by sight, the Bible says. You can't live based on what you see. You can't live, say, well, this isn't God's will because it doesn't look like it'll work out. No, you have to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. You have to live constantly through the eyes of God, and that's through faith. And then lastly, number four, the operation of faith. The object of our faith is God, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who our faith is in. But the faith comes from, the origin of our faith comes from the Word of God. The objective of our faith is the will of God. We want to find God's will for our life. But the operation of our faith, faith in action, this is where works come in. It's the work of God. Works, again, as I said at the beginning, works does not produce faith. But your faith will produce works in your life. Your faith will produce you to want to do more for God, to want to go soul winning, to want to read your Bible, to want to live for the Lord. I, cannot, I'm not, I can't determine your faith by your works. That's, that's against God's work. Okay, I don't look at somebody's works and say, oh, well, they're, they're not saved. Well, that's not how God works, because it's the faith that produces the works. It's not the works that produces the faith. Just because maybe somebody is serving God and going gun ho and maybe somebody's not, doesn't mean that one person's saved and one person's not. Because it's not the works that produces faith. Faith will produce your works. More faith will want you to do more for God. And the operation of your faith, your faith put in action, is the work of God. That's why it says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of, the, of them that diligently seek him. Faith will want you to do more for God. It will want you to find God. It will want you to be closer to God. It will it'll, it'll drive you to go soul winning. It will drive you to be at church. It will drive you to do something for the for the Lord, maybe no matter how big or how small, it's faith that makes a Christian operate. It's faith that keeps you going. It's faith that keeps you in church. It's faith that keeps your children wanting to serve the Lord and wanting to find God's will for their life. That's why it's important to keep them in the Word of God, to keep them full of faith. 
lots of Christians that I know, uh, they work in church, they serve in church, they teach Sunday school, they work in the nursery, they work in junior church, but they lack faith. And it's evident because faith is what will produce God to bless. Faith is what God's after, not the work. God will bless your works, but he blesses it because of your faith. Say, well, you know, maybe my life has not been, you know, I don't see God moving as what I want. I don't really see maybe God working. You know, uh, last couple weeks has, you know, just been, uh, I hadn't got to see some people saved on Saturday. And I'm going to confess here my fault, so don't. Uh, don't uh, judge me too much. Don't crucify me. But, uh, you know, the last couple weeks on Saturdays, I hadn't really seen people saved like I wanted to. You know, I hadn't got a chance. And, and I, you know, gave the, I gave out gospel tracts. I was, you know, I was trying to witness. And, you know, I was like, Lord, you know, I, I want to see people saved. You know, I want to constantly, you know, be giving people the gospel. And, and, and you know, the Lord reminded me that my faith is from the Word of God. I needed to be in God's Word more and be in prayer, but also I wasn't really, I wasn't really giving God my all. I wasn't really working for God like I should. I wasn't really, I wasn't really giving, giving my heart to God, but it's because my faith wasn't there like it should have been. I was trying to do it on my own. I was trying to, you know, uh, use my personality to win people, maybe. You know, you, you think, what, what, what more can I do to win people? And I walk up to a door and I said, and, I, and, and the Lord reminded me of that, and I said, you know, Lord, it's the Holy Spirit that does the work. I have to go, but I have to go trusting that the Holy Spirit will convict the hearts of people, that the Holy Spirit will draw people to him. And I just have to have faith to trust that God will do his part. I have to work, but I've got to trust God. And so yesterday I got a chance to see some young people saved. And uh, that, you know, it just brought joy to my heart to know that I got a chance to witness somebody and somebody got saved. But it's because I had to be reminded that my faith to do the work of God, to serve the Lord, to do this, to operate in God's work, I had to have faith in God. I had to trust God. You know, sometimes we get to where we do this week in and week out, but we begin to begin we begin to do it in our flesh. We begin to do it of ourselves. We begin to operate in our own in our own under our own power and we forget and we lack to place our faith where it belongs and that's in God and let God do the work through us. We need to work, but God blesses faith. God blesses your faith. If you look there in Hebrews chapter 11, this is the last thing, then we'll close it down. Amen. There's coffee back there. Coffee's calling. Hebrews chapter 11, you look there, verse number, uh, verse number 2. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4, by faith Abel offered unto God. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated. Verse 6, but without faith. Verse 7, by faith, Noah. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham. By faith, he sojourned in the land, for he looked for a city. Verse 10, verse 11, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Verse 12, therefore sprang there even of one, and, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars in the sky and multitude, and the sand, is by, and the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Verse 13, these all died in faith. And, it, and, it just go, and you go through again, verse 17, by faith, Abraham, all constantly by faith. And as Christians, we have to be reminded that the work of God, finding God's will, finding what God wants for our churches, finding what God wants for our homes, finding what God wants for our nation has to be by faith. It won't happen if we try to do it. If we try to find God's will, but we do what we tell God, we know what we're doing. You've got to give it to God. You've got to just trust God by faith. Let God give you what you need. Let God take care of your family. Let God help you. 
in the work of the church and let God bless. But it has to be done by faith. Amen? By faith. If you need more faith, if you desire to have more faith, if you like the apostles or the disciples that said, Lord, increase our faith. Well, all they had to do was get to know Jesus a little more. Amen? If you want to get to know the Lord more, get to know His Word. Amen? You, you won't find God's will outside of God's Word. And I believe this church is, you know, that we're looking for a pastor, and I believe God has great things ahead for this church. But, you know, it's, it will only be done by faith. You know, God's will will be revealed, but only by faith. And we have to determine that we're going to trust God. Uh, Hutchinson, before uh, my dad came uh, to the church, uh, it was 14 years ago, and uh, there was an evangelist that we found the church through. In fact, it was Brother Johnson, the man I talked to. He came and he preached at the church, and he found people that were just, they were praying for a pastor, they were looking for God's will, and so dad went out by faith to Hutchinson, Kansas, and the first time when we pulled into town is when, I don't know if anybody remembers, but when those gas stations blew up in South Hutchinson. That's, we, they blew up as we pulled into town. And uh, yeah, it was pretty rough. Dad was like, Lord, where did you send me? I mean, he said, I'm in purgatory or something, you know, something close to it. And, uh, you know, uh, and we, it blew up as we're pulling into town, and I remember the little boy looking like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen that before. And, uh, you know, we moved, we moved here, but we moved by faith. And we trusted God. And the church was trusting God. And it happened because of faith. And it taught me, and, it's, it's, and as the Lord reminds me again and again and again and again, that if we're going to live the Christian life, if we're going to get something done for God, if we're going to find God's will, if our children are going to find God's will, then we have to... Uh, we have to do it by faith. Amen. By faith. You have faith today. Are you working on your faith? Like I said, faith has to grow. You have to work at your faith. Uh, you have to exercise your faith and allow your faith to grow more in God's Word. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the wonderful